Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Championship Weekend Review. We have made it. The championship weekend has concluded. We're going to talk about who won the games and who is going to the Super Bowl. We have the NFL expert, the head producer of the L7C, Mr. Justin Akendel. How are you doing today, sir? I'm here. We fucking made it, man. <laughs> about 10 days, not 10, nine days away from the Super Bowl. It's almost here. Which... It's crazy, man. I just remember back in September going through who we thought were going to make the playoffs then and who we thought were going to do well, who we thought were going to tank, and now we're finally here to the final two teams. And these are teams that we said could be at this moment, and here they are, man. But before we go into that, let's talk about the championship games that happened. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to start off with... um. The AFC, we're going to go to Baltimore, Chiefs at Ravens. Mm -hmm. The Chiefs won this game 17-10. I know I said um, last week it was Baltimore's time. I know, mm -hmm. I know I said two weeks ago it was Buffalo's time. Same here. And Patrick Mahomes said, fuck all that. Andy Reid said, fuck all that. Steve Spagnuolo said, fuck all that. And Travis Kelsey said, fuck all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chiefs won the game 17-10. She scored 17 points in the first half, and that was enough to win them, win them the game. The Ravens also um, beat themselves in this game. Yes. They had eight penalties for 95 yards. The Chiefs only had three penalties for 30 yards. Lamar had a fumble in the second quarter and a pick in the fourth quarter. Zay Flowers had the killer in the um, fourth quarter, fumbling the ball at the goal line, trying to reach it across. And before that, on the 54-yard pa pass that got him down there, motherfucker wanted to get up and start taunting. I think that was a real killer, man. I think that that was bad. I, I, yeah, it was bad, but, like, you know, he was about to score. Or he was, like, after that, you know, they rectified. They get down there, and then he fumbles. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and then they, they had another one at the end of the second quarter that set up the field goal. I believe it was Kyle Van Noy got up in um Travis Kelsey's face and pushed him and that um got a 15 yard penalty that got the Chiefs drive going to give them that 17th point. But yeah, Kansas City's defense was awesome the whole game. Baltimore really couldn't do shit. Their game plan left a lot to be desired cuz they only gave six carries to the running backs and Lamar Jackson only had eight carries and the rest of it was passing. Lamar Jackson threw the ball he threw the ball 37 times, and they were only down by 10 in the majority of that second half. So I don't really understand why they um abandoned the run like that. They could have kept running the ball. I know the Chiefs don't, like, for the past month have been great against the run, but I feel like they could have ran the ball some more. But, um, yeah, the Chiefs were amazing. Their first two drives of the, of the game got 14 points real quick. Travis Kelsey had a vintage performance out of him. 11 targets, 11 catches, 116 yards. He heard everyone talking shit. He heard everyone talking shit. Mahomes heard everyone talking shit. And they didn't let the Ravens um, do it. I mean, the Ravens kind of looked like they um they weren't ready for that moment with all the penalties and just how the game was going and just their um offensive game plan. The defense showed up in the second half of the game and and stop the Chiefs for the most part, but the offenses couldn't get anything going. And overall, the Ravens were shook, and the Chiefs looked like they'd been there before, and they got it done just like they've been doing the past six years. I, I really don't get what the Ravens were trying to do offensively. The fact that their defense was able to shut out the Chiefs an entire second half, and you can't do anything offensively is just so mind-boggling. There was... You wrote it down, but there were still so many plays where I'm like, Lamar, why are you not running? Like, are you trying guess, to prove that you're I guess Lamar was trying to pull. Yeah, like you were about to say. I guess Lamar was trying to pull a point that he can beat these niggas from the pocket, bro. Like, he was holding the ball for so long. Like, yes. you could have ran at some points in that game and picked up chunk yards. I didn't understand what he was doing there either. Like, that was bad, man. Like, it, it really was bad. I'm just like, bro, just run. Like, there's a whole first down there. And there were times where he got, like, big chunks and then just stopped. I was like... I don't know. Then he had the interception. I don't know why Isaiah likely put his hand up like he was wide open in triple coverage. Like, I, I, I don't know what that was. You had that pick. You had the fumble by Lamar, the fumble by Zay, the taunting by Zay. 
too many penalties, man. They look so undisciplined, especially for a hardball team. Yeah, they were they were so un they, they just weren't ready for the moment, it looked like. It it just looked like a team that you know the the pressure and the moment was just too big for them. And the Chiefs, you know, this is their six AFC championship game. They, they've been there before. They've just been there before. And I think that was the main difference in the game because I don't, I really don't like the Chiefs defense is good. And next week when we do our Super Bowl preview, we're gonna talk all about that shit about how good the Chiefs defense is. But I feel like they could have found some holes in the running game to exploit that because passing the ball on them just wasn't going to work. Lamar Jackson was holding the ball too long. Last week, Josh Allen was more productive than um the Ravens. Josh Allen was more productive, running the ball and make and just simply trying to make shit happen. Lamar Jackson forgot how in that game to make shit happen. He forgot what really got him to this point in his career. Like, if shit's not working, if the pass game not working, if they call him bullshit, you gotta make that shit happen. Lamar Jackson simply did not do it. It's so bad on the Ravens part because we'll talk about the next game, but the head coach from the next game, Dan Campbell, he he was very truthful. He was just like, you don't know how many times you're going to get a shot at this. This could have been like our only shot. This was The Ravens team was fully healthy. This is one of the best teams Lamar's ever had. He was fully healthy. He's going to win MVP in a couple of weeks when the season's over. They had the number one thing seed. They were at home. They brought the Ravens alumni all-stars to the game. Um, Reed, freaking Lewis, Suggs, all of them. The mayor is there tailgating with fans. And then you blow it like that, man. And then you see the emotion. Just, you don't know how many times you're going to get a shot at that. Like, that was your shot. Just like and Buffalo. Just that was their shot. Like, there's people coming up. Again, we're talking about. We have talked about it two weeks in a row. There's only been two quarterbacks that beat Mahomes in the playoffs, and the ones retired. I mean, Burrow and Cincinnati are going to be back next year. Wasn't on the notes, but Jim Harbaugh got hired for the Chargers. We know how good a coach he is, and that roster is loaded. Like, you just don't know, man. Like, when you have the opportunity, you got to take it, and they failed. They did fail, and then the, it was just the way it happened, too. Yeah. It was just the the way they played it. The game was like, like – that Buffalo game last week, like two weeks ago, mm -hmm. Buffalo lost the game, but there's no shame in losing the way that they did. Baltimore got embarrassed. That was a embarrassing performance. Just leaving your defense out to dry like that, not doing what got you there. They this was a running football team the entire year, mm -hmm. and you know running backs only get six carries, and Lamar Jackson only gets six eight carries, and Zay Flowers got like two gimmicky carries. Like I feel like they could have kept running the ball and. It would have ended up better for him. I, I just don't know. And now you're sitting here. Because now the, the real question going around is like, now will Lamar even ever win a Super Bowl, Super Bowl, let alone get to one? Yeah. And then, like you said, like Dan Campbell said, this shit's not guaranteed every year. The Ravens play in the best division in football. Yep. They ain't guaranteed to win that division year in, year out, like the Chiefs win the, <laughs> the AFC West year in, year out. So, yeah, they got they got some things they need to figure out. They just lost their defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald. He just got uh, he just took the um, Seattle Seahawks job, so they got to fill that position up. So I don't know how good the defense is going to be next year. I mean, they still got a lot of players. The Chiefs. Well, let's go talk about Ravens. Let's talk about the winners real quick. The Chiefs, they were incredible in that game. Patrick Mahomes did what Patrick Mahomes do. Travis Kelsey, I mean, we haven't seen him play like that all year. We haven't seen all the, year. We haven't seen this Chiefs offense the past two games all year. This is a team no. that lost to Aiden O'Connell, who didn't complete a pass in the second half against the Raiders this year. And it's honestly mostly the defense in this one because the Chiefs, yeah. um, the Chiefs offense didn't do, didn't do a thing. Didn't do a thing in the second half. When MVS caught the ball to seal the game, I was like, "Huh, MVS? He yes, caught it? Bro, that, I couldn't that, believe it." That was Stone and he, Hands himself. And he caught that. Just I, I brought it up last week, but this is starting to really get dangerously similar to the Patriots thing, and not because of how many times they're getting to this championship game, the Super Bowl. But we'll we'll see what Jim Harbaugh does. Patriots, AFC East, besides a couple times where Rex Ryan's Jets won and all of that, really wasn't the strongest. AFC West, two years ago, it was supposed to be the greatest thing ever, but it's not. It's not really the strongest. You're winning that division. That means you're guaranteeing yourself at least one home game. 
usually more than likely you're the number one seed. So then you get the buy, you get to host the championship game at your house, and then you get to the Super Bowl. This is almost a very similar to like the Patriots run. It is, and the thing is, they're doing it in different ways mm-hmm. at this point. You know, when the Chiefs first broke off to the scene, Patrick Mahomes was lighting everyone up. He mm-hmm. hasn't done that this year, and it's been the defense for you know majority of the season carrying this team, carrying them the wins. There, you know, there's spots in the season where the Chiefs weren't getting more than twenty points. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. and. You know, the defense all year has only given up average 17 points allowed all season. So, you, you know what that's showing me, though? They got to pay Chris Jones. Don't, because he only, because they only, because after he sat out that first game where Detroit was going up and down on him, and then they long that, lost that, they signed him for this year. It's only a year, bro. You better give him a big deal because that defense is very different when he is not playing. Yeah, they need Chris Jones, but. Right before we got on here, I was watching a video about how the Chiefs disguise coverage and how mm-hmm. they use disguise their coverage and use their and how everyone is interchangeable mm-hmm. in their like secondary. So you have corners who can, you know, run back and cover tight ends and play safety and they they show two deep looks all the time. You know, they'll ro- rotate down and, and do zero blitzes where they can get unfree rushers. Steve Spagnuolo is a great defensive coordinator. And he's got those guys. He, he's got those guys in the perfect position. The corners, Trent McDuffie, Legarius Steed, they they are big pieces in that defense too. So it's not just Chris Jones. It is a it is a collective effort. That chief secondary is a problem. It is a collective effort, but you you need your star in that defense. Like if he's not there, it's just not the same. Yeah, he, he's the only he's the only star on the on that Chiefs defense and. So he gonna be um not see um McDuffie gonna be a problem too. He he's yeah. he's only a second year player. Yeah, I mean, Justin, it's just so crazy because I mean, even I, I said at the beginning of the year, this is the when everyone at the beginning of the year, this is the craziest AFC I may have ever seen. There's no way the Chiefs are getting back, and then it just everything lined up in a way that the Chiefs are back. Yeah, a lot of shit broke their way too. A lot of shit broke broke their way again in that cold ass game. Well, first of all, being in the AFC West, that division is dog shit. The yep. Chargers sucked, the Broncos suck, and the Raiders are not good either. Mm-hmm. You get the home game against the Dolphins in the cold, and then you go up to Buffalo and you beat them. You you put you put it to Buffalo. They won that game, and then doing what you did against Baltimore, you know they deserve to be where they're at right now. Right. And they're going against a familiar foe because they got the 49ers who played against Detroit. But the 49ers were in a fight. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, the 49ers were bullshitting in this game. The 49ers <laughs> won the game 34-31. The Lions were up 24-7. to mm, They were not playing around. Game. No, they weren't. And then the, in the second half, they proceeded to get outscored 27-7 to by the 49ers. <laughs> But this isn't the first time the offense in the playoffs fell apart. In the, um in the Rams game, their wild card weekend, they only scored three points in the second half. So it wasn't the most surprising thing to watch the Lions collapse. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still the Lions, and bad shit typically happens to that franchise. I was hoping that things would be different, but hey, at the end of the day, this is the Lions. Shit, bad shit be happening to them. Unexplainable bad shit be happening to them. And then in that second quarter. I'm, you no, know, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna say on the podcast. I was so ready to bury the 49ers. I was like, they did right after Black Brock Purdy threw his pick that um extended the Lions' lead to 21-7. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, the fucking 49ers did all this shit. Booted Jimmy G out. Didn't give Trey Lance a chance. Yep. Just to have the same goddamn thing in Brock Purdy. And then the second half happened, and Brock Purdy went off. Brock Purdy brought the 49ers back. I mean, he was throwing dimes, running, shit, running better than fucking Lamar Jackson did earlier that day. I'll tell you that right now. Which is such a terrible which is, thing. Which is to wild say. to even fathom. But yeah, yeah, Brock Purdy was a better runner on Championship Sunday than Lamar Jackson. Just think about that. Purdy starts heating up in the third quarter, like I said, throwing dimes, gets the game tied up 24 24. In the third quarter, um, the um, Lions went for a fourth down that would have 
made the um, game 17 again. But um, Kurt Reynolds drops that pass, and then um, 49ers go and score a touchdown off of that. I don't think the field goal in that situation really would have helped them because they couldn't stop the 49ers in the second half. They couldn't stop them. I think Dan Campbell knew that shit. He, he wasn't going to trust his defense. He was going to do what he did all year and go for fourth down. So I ain't going to kill Dan Campbell for that because I really don't think it would have made that much of a fucking difference in the game. And the and then in another, well, and then if they would have kicked that field goal, they would have been up by how much if they would have made it? Seventeen. So they would have been up seventeen if they made the field goal. Yeah, well, I, then you I, s- think, I think he's getting most of the shit because in the first half, at the right before halftime, he kicked the field goal to go up seventeen. So I think a lot of people are like, "Why didn't you just do that shit again?" Yeah, I mean, it's just I know I heard Brady talking about it too. It's just like. I mean, even if it's 17, you can't stop them, but that's still three. That's another possession. They still got to score, though. Like, it's hindsight 2020 now. If Reynolds catches that ball, then it's a great. Reynolds just got to catch the fucking ball. Yeah, but. They, they didn't execute. You can't put down the coach. He didn't. Then they had a fumble. They had the turnover. It's just. I don't know. You Like you said, that's how Dan Campbell's been all this year. But sometimes, man, when fourth downs be killing you. Sometimes it's just take the points. Take the points was one of the top three trending things in America that Man, day. <laughs> you you can't play that game tight at that point in the game, though. These niggas are coming back. They on your ass. They, I mean, the 49ers are on their ass. Right when the third quarter started, on their ass, like, ready, coming back. You know, you got to be aggressive in that spot, in my opinion. And if Kurt Reynolds catches the fucking ball, then, you know, it's different. Like, the decision was not a bad decision because it was executed properly and the player did not execute properly. If he catches oh. the ball, we, it's a whole different conversation. And the fucking know. field goal is not guaranteed either. What if he misses the kick? And then, the same, and, then, and, and then you in the same spot. True, but now after seeing some signs, you got to do some smart things. Like ever since 28 to 3, like you said, they were, they, didn't, they were trying to kill the game too. They were throwing passes up 28 to 3 back in the Super Bowl I'm talking about. Just run out the clock, man. Sometimes the simple stuff works. And like the Patriots came out that app, they were on their ass. But if you would have ran the ball instead of throwing passes with Matt Ryan, who was the offensive coordinator of that game? Kyle Shanahan. And he's hey, he's seen it too. Anything's possible if the other team gives you openings. Definitely should have ran the ball more. I, I don't know what he was, what he was thinking there. I, he was I'm, trying I'm to be on, cute. I, I, no, I'm going to have to rewatch that damn Super Bowl because <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie. I was very drunk that second half, and <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was. You were I like was, you were in Atlanta because that's how no. all of Atlanta was. They were. I'm just saying you were acting like because all of Atlanta was, bro. They were already getting the parade stuff set up at halftime, and the fourth half, half it's pin drop. No, listen. I was. I was still in college at this point. I was DJing. This is when I first got my little turntable, and I was DJing. I was having the ball, and I was pissed drunk. I fall asleep there most of that second half. I'm not going to lie. I was asleep. And then I woke up, and the game was tied. And we in overtime. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> what the fuck? I thought the, I thought the Falcons had this shit. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, so, man, you just got to do like, I understand what the camo thing, because that's what he's done all year. But you got to be careful, because you keep doing these fourth downs, and like hindsight 2020, they start tossing you more and more games. You're going to be out like Stanley. He does it better than Brandon Staley, but. Like I said, going for fourth down is not what is not what fucked the lines o- over. It was not scoring on offense and then giving up all those goddamn points that's in the second effort. half. Yeah, that that's the real reason why they lost. And then um, yeah, got we the pretty... onside kick too, huh? They almost got the onside kick. And they weren't going for that shit, bro. They had a good bounce. Like <laughs> they had a good bounce. I was like, oh, are they gonna get this? And then they did. And I was like, well, uh... whatever. They weren't going to get that shit, but yeah. In the four in the fourth quarter, Lions went for fourth down again with the game tied. Didn't get it. Well, no, they they could have tied the game and went for fourth down. Didn't get that. And then the 49ers score a touchdown, and then it goes and then it goes. See, that's the one you can criticize, not tying the game up. But um, but yeah, then the 49ers score off that 34-24, and then the game's over at this point. Lions get a garbage time touchdown and don't get the onside kick, and that's the game. And the 49ers are back in the Super Bowl. Thanks to Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy had a great second half. No. No, he did. I mean, that big, that big a deficit in an NFC 
um, championship game. It really does help they were at home, though. I don't think they'd do that if they were in Detroit. That crowd would have been too much. No. I don't, I don't think they come back on the road either. But that's why you need that number one seed, man. I mean, for <laughs> for stuff like this. But no, nah, it, it really is something because, which we'll talk about more next week, it's going to be a rematch of when Patrick won his first Super Bowl against San Francisco. I mean, that was against Jimmy G. Uh, this one time it's against Purdy. So Shanahan has now taken Jimmy G and Purdy to the Super Bowl. And I, I get on Shanahan because I get tired of saying – one thing I hate about sports media and all that stuff is they repeat the same topics and debates and lines every year. And the one thing with Shanahan that he makes me say is like every year they have the most talented roster in the NFL, not even close, not even close. And we have no titles to show for it. Don't know if I'm going to pick them next week, but they got He got to get one, man. Because he doesn't yeah. got to get one. Kansas already got two. Yeah, but Andy Reid over there, he got <laughs> – he might have the GOAT back. <laughs> the GOAT of this year. I mean, he's not Tom Brady. No one's Tom Brady. But he might be <laughs> – this nigga is the last rock, person, man. Like, he's too good. <laughs> I was say the last person who said some nonsense like that on here, his quarterback didn't last over a minute in his game. So, no, no, no go there cursing. <laughs> cursing. <laughs> no, but this, this – Patrick Mahomes is fucking unbelievable. Like, I, I know I don't say it enough on this podcast because see deep down inside I'm a hater and I live in Cincinnati, so I have to hate this man. But and you should, good. and you should. That's the I should. <laughs> I, nah, I, I'm getting to the point where I was at with Tom Brady. You just gotta appreciate greatness. You gotta appreciate greatness. We might not see this shit again. Might not. Cincinnati feels like they will, and they think it's gonna be them, which they should. That is the point of sport because they're talking like. Everyone's like, oh, man, Patrick Mahomes, blah, blah, blah. And Cincinnati's like, hey, when our quarterback's healthy, where have we gone? The same shit. That's how y'all should feel. Hey. Pat, hey, Burrow was healthy last year. In the AFC Championship game, they won them one. Yeah. They well, won that's what one. I'm saying. Cincinnati, the four, when Burrow's healthy, the minimum they've got to AFC Championship, the same shit as Patrick. I'm just saying that's how Cincinnati fans should feel. Oh yeah, that that's how Bengals fans do feel. But the, this thing, Patrick Mahomes, he he'll get hurt, and when he is hurt, these niggas don't the pro- they, 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 they 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 miss a beat. That's the problem. That's the, that's the problem. If Joe Burrow can stay healthy all year, then Kansas City they, they ain't cakewalking through this stuff. I'm not saying they're cakewalking, but Man, you, the weapons, when, the best um, wide receiver trio in the league is in Cincinnati when it's fourth. I mean, they're one and one in the playoffs. Overall record, Patrick Mahomes only beat Joe Burrow once, including regular season. Was it the Tampa Bay Super Bowl or last year where he was hurt? Patrick I, Mahomes. Um, I, I think it was last year. The Tampa Bay one. They just that's when they yeah, they, they yeah, couldn't they, block anybody. Yeah, they couldn't block. But and um, then what did, they, yeah, so what did it, Kansas City do the next year? Get all new linemen. <laughs> yeah, but even when Patrick Mahomes is hurt, even when this man is hurt. They're still winning games. They're still in the Super Bowl. They're not missing a beat. Fucking Joe Burrow hurt. The Bengals can't do a goddamn thing. They can't well, do shit. Patrick's oh, wait, he's hurt to the extent he can still play. When Burrow gets hurt, he's out. Like, uh, like well, Patrick, I, I don't well, remember no. the last time he's missed a game. Well, Burrow, the, earlier this year, this season, he hurt the calf in preseason. And tried, I guess he tried to come back too early. Yeah. And... He just wasn't the same. He wasn't the same those first couple of games. And then he starts getting healthier. And then um, he fucking tears ligaments in his wrist. And then, yeah, yeah that's chalk. But, I mean, this man Mahomes is too good, man. Like, and you know, it's funny. Too. This, this, this nigga is an absolute problem. You, you lose Tyreek Hill. You don't miss a beat. You win the Super Bowl last year. Your offense sucks all regular season this year. And you're still in the Super Bowl because the defense shows up like. Well, they're also they don't they don't make the mistakes that other teams apparently make in these games. Jay, that's why that's why I do really love sports because it's really, and I, I know it's more with basketball, but it's really one or three plays that decide an entire game in a two three hour span. Jalen Hurts doesn't fumble last year; the Chiefs lose. Jimmy G completes that pass. Uh, 49ers win, and it's the same shit with Tom Brady. All of Tom Brady's Super Bowls have been like a field goal or less. They've all been mm. they've all been super close games. 
man. Like it's, it's so just cliche. who makes who makes the less mistakes. That's who wins the game. Period. It is it is so cliche, but fucking football is all about execution and mm -hmm. it is a game of inches for mm -hmm. real. Like that shit people say it all the time, but that shit is true. It's it's little shit that can swing a game. Shit. The fucking um in the fucking Chiefs Ravens game this week. I bet if um if Kyle Van Noy doesn't get that um get that personal foul that gets him to seventeen so points, mm -hmm. it could it could have been so different. It could have been so different because the play before they they stuffed the Chiefs for um, negative yards. Yeah, yeah. The Chiefs and, offense yeah. didn't do any anything in that second. I, they made they were just well, co better coach man, better coach. Now you got this rematch, which you don't see often. I mean, 49ers, Kansas City teams are different, but that is February 11th, 6.30 p.m. CBS in Las Vegas. Man, do you see it with some of these ticket prices? It's a Super Bowl, bro. <laughs> you know that shit's expensive as fuck. I don't, need to, I don't need to look at that shit and remind myself that I'm poor and I can't go. But this, cause, but this is even more because this is in Vegas. Oh, man, it's... There were some like minimum were like eight to nine. Yeah. And you got to get the, and there are a lot of people flying in there to not even go to the Super Bowl. They're just going to go to be around it because it's in Vegas. Well, yeah, Vegas, a city like Vegas, you can do that. You can get the full, you can get the full Super Bowl experience and not go to the game because Vegas is fun. Yeah. So it, it's, it's crazy, man. Well, oh, but. On Detroit's thing, though, I didn't expect them to be in the NFC Championship game to start the year, so I will congratulate them at least getting it to that that point because I don't think anyone expect them to get to that far this early. They're on the right track. Yeah, but that division, like Dan Campbell said, that shit ain't guaranteed, and he he was feeling that shit, and we can't just pencil them in. Green Bay's coming. Mm -hmm. Chicago's about to draft Caleb Williams. Mm -hmm. Minnesota. We'll see what Minnesota does. We'll see where Kirk Cousins ends up because he's a free agent this year. So we'll see. But it ain't guaranteed that they'll be back in back in the NFC Championship game or shit, even in the playoffs. You're right. None of this guaranteed. One injury, then it's over. Justin, man, what do you think about? Because he did get hired. This was what everyone expected. Harbaugh. But now with Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, I mean, he's inheriting a very talented squad. I. I love the hire. It's it's exactly what the Chargers needed to do. They need to get um Justin Herbert, a guy who who's been there before and who's done it before. Not fucking Brandon Staley, not fucking Anthony Lynn, Lynn motherfuckers who you don't know if they can do the job. I know Jim Harbaugh can do the job, and he's done it at multiple places. And I'm excited for the Chargers. They can finally stop being a fucking laughing stock <laughs> because I'm I'm so sick of this team being shitty. I need Patrick Mahomes. That I was just gushing over Patrick Mahomes, but I need this man to have some competition in the division. Yeah, I mean that was a problem with Brady. He didn't have any competition in the division. Yeah, so I'm, I'm with it, we'll Jimmy, bo Jimmy boy. <laughs> oh yeah, with, with with his cheating ass. <laughs> yeah, I mean my man said, allegedly. He said he loves Michigan, but there's no Lombardis in college. I was like, wow, that's. Hey, that's man, true. That's, a, that's the only thing he needed. That's the only thing he needed to do left. He got to the Super Bowl. He won a natty. Now he need to win that bitch. Yeah, man. It's just lost to his brother. Lost to his brother. San Francisco 12 and 5. Kansas City 11 and 6. Super Bowl. CBS next Sunday. Just let's go to some winners and losers, man. Because I know we're going to do a live Super Bowl preview and stuff next, next time. What, what we got for winners and losers? Man, first of all, we ain't doing NFL winners and losers. We just talked about who are winners and losers for the past 30 <laughs> minutes. So we doing winners and losers from the other shit that I be liking. So, okay. Winners, I got to go the New York Knicks. Okay. They're back. <laughs> I'm with it, man. Jalen Brunson. They Could on an like an eight-game. Yeah, they on an eight-game winning streak right now. Julius Randle just busts up his shoulder. My nigga OG and no, we've been going off. I've been enjoying the past month of watching the New York Knicks. I've been fucking with it. I like it. And then well, another winner, we got to go to the World of Wrestling. World Rumble review is coming out this week because I did yes. it yesterday, so I know it's coming out soon. Jade Cargill. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a preview of what Jacob said. Fucking WWE made Jade Cargill a star 
in fucking less than 15 minutes than AEW did in fucking three years. Yep. Yep. Simple as that. Yep. I, I mean, yeah, there's nothing, there's more to it, but it's just, you know, it's sad in 15 minutes. Jay Cargo was allowed to eliminate the top woman in the division, Becky Lynch, and had interactions with another one, Bianca Belair. And that was more in 15 minutes than any interaction she's had with the AEW's women's title and Man. Britt Baker's group in three years. When she and Bianca were staring down each other in the middle of that ring. Holding up like, a whole other human apiece. Yes, this is when I was like, I've been waiting for, I've been waiting to see this since I've first seen Jay Cargo get in the fucking wrestling ring. Mm -hmm. It's wow. the first time I've seen her in AEW. I'm like, her and Bianca. I, I need her to be, I need her to be to the, I need her in the show. And I didn't so believe you. Up against I, her. I didn't believe you because I was just like, "There's no way a billionaire." <laughs> oh yeah, you were hating, bro. I was. I remember be that. <laughs> yeah, because there was no way I thought a billionaire would be so stupid to let someone with this career, all that walk. I didn't think to that's I just didn't think Tony would let that be. And I was just, I was wrong. I was that wrong. Is, that's wild. I mean, I'm on, I'm on Twitter. And I'm I'm seeing the rando wrestling fans because the fucking algorithm just be pulling that bullshit mm -hmm. for me. He was like, one tweet I sent to y'all, man, they be ain't have divas like this back in the day. Where she come from? Type shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been saying this since Jay Cargo has been a professional wrestler. Once she gets to the show, once she gets to WWE, that bitch is gonna be shot up to the moon. She's gonna be a household name. You are gonna be seeing Jay Cargo fucking everywhere. The bad thing is, you know who else is gonna be real household if you haven't been really watching nxt because now they saw how good she looks and how she can actually wrestle oh, tiffany Str tiffany stratton she, <laughs> she might be the number one contender the raw after wrestlemania yeah she she came out and i know some draws dropped oh yeah i know, I know I some, some of the house were like, like who, who is that, that? yep <laughs> uh, yeah th <laughs> they didn't know about her the world about to know about her soon but Jay Cargill, that's oh, beautiful. And then we got to go to the losers. I'm about to go with the Phoenix Suns on oh, Friday no. night. Oh, no. Devin Booker dropped 60, 60 62. Plus. Yeah, yep. 62, I think. Mm -hmm. And they lost. And on Sunday, I watched them in between football. And um, Devin Booker dropped 50 again. And they lost to Orlando. Yep. How are you scoring the end? Right now, you know they're up on they're up on um, Brooklyn. They won on Monday, but this is losers from last week. I, I just don't know how you score that many goddamn points, and y'all lose. And then my second loser is Vince McMahon and C Wrestling Podcast. Whatever it comes out for that, yeah, it'll be out probably. It'll probably be out sometime tomorrow afternoon. Well, day of recording, we're recording on the thirty first. It's probably going to be out on February first. So by the time you listen to this, the wrestling pod will be out. All right. Those were good. Those were good ones. Those were good ones. Um, I'm gonna start with my loser first because you brought up the Phoenix. Huh? My losers, the Atlanta Hawks. Look. Oh God, this team is dog shit, bro. <laughs> Man, cook, cook. I, I've been watching again. I've been watching this basketball shit for a very long time, and I understand the rules have changed. That you're base it, the game is basically post fight. You can't guard anyone. I understand. However. You let Luka Doncic score 73 points on you. And Justin, I don't know if you were able to watch Nine, the game. I watched, uh, no. I ref the game, mm -hmm. and um, I was on the baseline getting getting ready for the game to start. No, it was halftime, and I mm -hmm. came back in, and, they, and these kids were like looking. They are like, yeah, Luka had 44, 44 at halftime. And then I was like, they winning? They, it was like the game time. And these kids like, oh, he got a ticket for sure on this. And I was like, you damn right, that dude. <laughs> I was on the maps. I kid you not. A lot of those 73 points, they were literally letting this man just go lay it up. 93%, like a 90% true shooting percentage. That's um field goals, threes, and field goals, threes, and free throws yeah. percentage all put together. So 90%. And there was just some wide open length. They should be embarrassed. There was one of those performances where I was like, I wish David Sturd was alive because he'd take their team. Like he would just get, <laughs> like he would take their team. That was it was embarrassing. And you want to talk about and more embarrassing on the thing is, look, man, I love sports, but also you've listened to all the other stuff. 
I love anime. I'm into rivals and stuff. You're telling me, Trey Young, you're going to be compared to this man, Luca, for the rest of your life, and you're letting him score 73 on you in your house? And you ain't doing shit. Lil Just, Boozy, Lil Boozy saying courtside getting our grass from this man. In your house. And then on the flip side, your other then talk, you talked about the Phoenix Suns, Devin Booker, who's made a rivalry with um Luka Doncic. You score 62 and lose on the same day Luka scores 73 and wins. Like, come on, man. Come on. Mavs almost blew that shit, though. They almost did. <laughs> they they almost did. When, when Atlanta got a fucking brain and decided to double-team Luka as soon as he brought the ball up like he was Steph Curry or Caitlin Clark. Like, yes. what are you doing? They should all been, that whole coaching guy should have been fired that day. And yeah. the team should have been fine for embarrassing the city of Atlanta. That was garbage. I don't want to ever hear Trey Young be in the top point guard discussion ever again. I don't want to hear Atlanta anything. They are trash. Again, you're a Laker fan. I don't know why the fuck you want Devontae Murray. Get his ass. Don't take any. No one from Atlanta should be traded to any team because they all suck. First of all, the Lakers. First of all, trading for Devontae Murray is a lateral move. Don't do it. Do not do it. God, this fucking trap. DeJounte Murray is not be- is not that much better than Austin Re- Reeves or D'Angelo Russell the past two weeks. Because that nigga has been hooping. It's, it was embarrassing. I'm just sitting here. I was like, there is no defense. Like, they couldn't. There is no defense. It was just embarrassing. They looked like fourth graders playing against a high school team. They're trash. They <laughs> should literally be sent to the G League for a week. That's how bad out it was. And I watched that whole game after, after halftime. When I saw he had 44, I was like, well, looks like I know what I'm doing the rest of my Friday night. Uh, so you went a wrestler and losing. Um, <laughs> when you do listen to the wrestling podcast, I I was really calling out a lot of people. But yeah, you were cooking. <laughs> I will just say I'll call <laughs> you were Twitter. on something. I'm not gonna say their Twitter handle again on this one because, <laughs> but there is one particular person who said the four horsewoman era is over, but a four horsewoman won the Royal Rumble. And if you listen to, no, actually, you know all the people who think we really don't know what the fuck we're talking about wrestling, if you go back to every L7C Royal Rumble wrestling um, podcast, the previews, we have picked the Royal Rumble winner ever since we became the L7C right in the men's and women's. I fucking told y'all it was going to be Bailey and Cody. Hey, I ha- but you didn't even put Cody on your sheet. I actually put Cody. I, did, I, I, I listened I, I to our podcast's as recommendations. No, you talked me out of it. You said it was going to be CM Punk. I remember that shit. You talked me out of it. I did, but then on Sunday, I was just like, I had to. Re- I listened to this shit all over again. I was like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was already going to pick Bailey. There's no way in hell they were about to have a four horse woman not win that shit. Who the fuck do you people think this company is? And I'll tell you right now, Charlotte's winning next year. Just pencil that in. That's easy money. That's oh. easy. Easy. Two time? Oh, she you know she's gonna be the first two time women's winner. Nah, but when I was watching the Royal Rumble, I knew um I fucking knew my my um CM Punk pick was done. As soon as he said to Cody, I ain't come back I ain't come back to lose the dusty son. I did <laughs> ten I, years. I, I, I was I was like, they ain't gonna let this man CM Punk say that and not let Cody win this shit. <laughs> oh, Man, but I'll, I'll, but the Bailey one, I, I was nervous when she came out number three. I was quiet in the house. I was like, ah. And then if you look at that final final four, I was like, oh, this is a little rough. Return to Living Morgan. Just again, preview of the pod. Said Jay Cargo could be a dark horse to win. She was in the final three. Said Liv Morgan could be a dark horse to win. She was second place. We picked Bailey as a group, and she won. Just saying, we know what the fuck we're talking about. So anyone who doesn't listen, you listen to our picks, you're dumb. We're- where is that coming from? Who was questioning your wrestling right. knowledge? Like, I don't understand. Like, when I was in that show, I was like, damn, this thing is pissed off. Like, who has been talking shit? Bro, I was, no, nah, it was, oh my God. It was a shit in our own group message from one of our oh. own. Oh, yes. Oh. All right, know who it is. Then. And that pissed me off. And then, oh, see, I'm about to get mad. Like, this is Sunday all over again. I haven't even got to winners yet. Oh man, but no, I'll leave that be. Leave that be. And then the Twitter handle, Sports Illustrated. I I really go off on them. So that was the winners. Man, you went. Oh god, man. New York Knicks is a really good one. That's a really. Those niggas have been hooping. They've been hooping. They got the garden rocket. Man, that's a really good. That's a. That's a really good one. 
Winners, man. I, I, I got to go Pablo Beck. I got to go Triple H. Okay. Because this man, once now with the Vince stuff and freaking um done out, this man has done so much small quality of life things. You, as a wrestling fan watching for 20 plus years, are just wondering, why has this never been here? That, why has there never been something. a ticker? Why has there never been a ticker showing the longest people? You're like, damn, this is a quality of life. Like he's doing small quality of life stuff. You're like, you're like, damn, why has this never been in the Royal Rumble in all our years of watching? This is so convenient. That should have been a thing years ago. Like that that was a nice touch. I was like, I kept seeing that shit. I was like, why is this the first year we're doing this? Yeah. Why is this the first year? Why did it take us what? Over 30 World Rumbles to get that mm-hmm. shit to get that shit counting? You put countdown when when someone comes out every goddamn time. Like mm-hmm. I mean he He's cooking, man. Like, you, and you could tell it was Triple H red because you saw how all those NXT call ups did. Because mm-hmm. that's another side winner, bro. Braun Breaker, hey yo, <laughs> he, look, he look like a star. He look like a star. Hey yo, <laughs> like he, man. But NBA wise, I mean, I can't believe I'm about to say them. I really oh, can't. Come on, cook. Come oh. on, give, give, give him some credit. The winners I'm picking. Give those boys some credit. The Los they beat Angeles, Boston. They Boston this the weekend. Los Come Angeles on, Clippers. Ah, uh, they are. Ever since that initial stint with James Harden, they are actually really hooping. Like they're they're going pretty crazy. I can't go media far. Like they're the threat to win the West yet, but absolutely not. Fuck that. They. Nope. Right they now, they they're, do it they're going, man. They're going. I, I, Harden, Kawhi. But it's the same, man. When Kawhi Leonard plays, bro, like he, he's a dog. He just needs to play. I'm just saying, if the Clippers have a healthy Kawhi Leonard in the playoffs, and nigga, fuck James Harden. If Kawhi Leonard is as a healthy playoffs, the whole playoffs, he's not hurt one time in that playoffs. The West got to watch out because oh. they're going to be they're going to be a tough out. They they they're going to be a tough out. And the only team that I really see that can you know keep up with them is Denver. Mm-hmm. If it comes down to it, because obviously no one on that team can stop Jokic. Oh, I have another loser now because we're still talking about NBA because this <laughs> has been a hot topic today. The whole NBA community. More of the players. Y'all need to stop bitching. I'm I'm really getting sick of this shit. Oh my <laughs> god. Today was the I whole gotta push back on this a little bit. You talking about Halliburton and Embiid now? All, well, Embiid one's fine. Halliburton, he was actually hurt, but all these players now talking all this shit about all oh, the 65 game thing, blah blah blah. Look, this shit wouldn't be a roof, y'all motherfuckers were playing. Fact. That that's the pro that's Fact. why I am mad. Because yeah. they are acting like this shit came poof gave a copperfield. This came to effect because you had middle class lower class citizens saving their whole paychecks and then they get caught on that camera saying i came to see so and so and you over there eating peanuts but you just played the last game and then y'all got the audacity to piss off the rich folk sitting out espn tnt games and you thought that shit was gonna slide with abc it is y'all wanted to sit out and i understand it's y'all shit it was the coaches shit and it wasn't known because y'all were starting to lose them money. But now you piss everyone off. They made these rules, and now you have to live with it. Don't quit bitching. I will say with the two examples that you have been highlighted this week, Joel Embiid and Tyrese Halliburton, those niggas were actually hurt. And they went out of their way to rush back, and they came back too early and got hurt again. So with my ones, with those ones, I don't know why it's not a pause. I mean, I have to do this for the place where I work at if someone says they're hurt or sick whatever. Just show the damn commissioner doctors don't get that. Sh- that should be excused. That simple. If a doctor's report says it, they should be excused. I think that's a provision they should make. But any motherfucker who's just sitting, nah, I ain't going with it. And the people complaining, I don't care. So you need a, R- a MRI imaging saying, I, I can't play. Like, because, you know, Halliburton, Halliburton, you know, he strained his hamstring. And, mm-hmm. you know, that soft tissue, that shit tricky. You got oh, yeah. to let that shit heal. And then with Joel Embiid, that man has an injury history. That man is injury prone. First two years prone. he didn't play. Exactly. The man is injury prone. So when he's hurt, like, e- even fucking Kawhi Leonard, like, when they don't play, it's just like, hey, you know what the fuck going on with them? Like, they be but, hurt. 
But my but the Joel one, the one that pissed me off, dude. You played the day before, and you haven't played at Denver in four years. That's pissing me off. I, I he, know, he's but... ducking. He's ducking now. He's ducking them. <laughs> but then I. But then I, he didn't play against um, Portland here. But I... Portland's no. ass. Yeah, he didn't play against Portland, but he tried to come back against Golden State and it hurts himself again. Yeah, that one was bad. But he, the Denver one, bro, is just the fact that you haven't played there since twenty like nineteen. Yeah, but but it, you always want to shit on. You always want to shit on Joker when he come to Philly. <laughs> <laughs> bad optics, but it's just specifically Halliburton and MB like those like because I've been watching them closely. Like I I know they were actually hurt and. Trying to rush back from that is, you know, could be detrimental to the season and with seeing and all that. But the overall picture of the 65 games, yes, these NBA players need to shut the fuck up and play. Justin, bro, like, I don't get like, it, bro. like, if you ain't, if you ain't legitimately injured, if you can play, if you are 75 percent, get your ass out there and play. Justin, I don't get your ass it. out there and play. I don't get it, bro. I really don't because, like. Yeah, because they talk about like the people in the past, all that stuff. They were playing all these games. I'm not gonna. I mean, Michael played like 82 games, like 11 times. But they're Michael, they're go. LeBron James, he's the oldest player in the league, and this boy doesn't. He never gets hurt. No, no shit. Even it has been better this year. Like last year was last year was a fucking joke with these niggas and loads management. Like. That was the oh, peak that of these was niggas. worse. That was yeah, that worse. was the peak of these that's niggas missed, not that, fucking playing. I forgot the rules in play. Yeah, th- that that shit was just fucking ridiculous. I mean, fucking thirty minutes before tip off, fucking Steph Curry ain't playing. Well, what the fuck? How am I supposed to watch the game if the star ain't fucking playing? And then even worse, because we barely had it legal then. You pissing off them better. You pissing I, off Vegas. That's I know, another you're person. Fucking with my money. You fucking with my money on these games. I put the shit in the morning, thinking someone's gonna play, and then thirty minutes before game, he doesn't play, and then fucking DraftKings will let me cash the bet out. Come you know, on now. You know when Adam Silver got them calls from Turner, Disney, and uh, Vegas, he's like, "Oh yeah, we gotta, yeah, we we can't be doing this." And Justin bros the fact too that like these teams. Because of these incentives, now you could tell. Because a lot of these teams, I'm sorry, the Lakers, when there was shit on the line, bro, I don't understand how the in-season tournament, they went 7-0, and but regular season, they've been dog shit. <laughs> now you see what happens know. when you attach some money to it. You yeah. got, speaking of Lakers, shout out to AD, because he has not missed that many games, if at all. Like, he's going. No. He ain't and playing around. It, it's so crazy with the Lakers. They get that double overtime win. Against, mm-hmm. against, against the Warriors, Warriors during the Saturday. Royal Rumble, I was like, "What is yeah. happening?" Yeah, get that that game lasted longer than the Royal Rumble match, which is wild. The, the, the whole event. That that shit was crazy. But then they lost to the um, I can't remember who they lost to before. But it was the fucking Hawks. They suck. Oh, oh, it was Houston. It was Houston. And then they follow that up because yeah, Dylan Brooks and was Houston. in that boy, Dylan Brooks. Like, God, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the Lakers going to do. Like you said, the end season tournament, they locked in. So did the Pacers. And now you're just like, what the hell? Well, Tyrese Halliburton got, yeah. got hurt. That that man is everything in that team. But Leading yeah, the league in assist? Yeah, I don't know. If the Lakers don't, because I don't see them making the move right now, because if DeJounte Murray is the move, then fucking you just keep you just keep the same team you have and hope you make a run like he did last year. Because, mm-hmm. like I said, that is a lateral move. That is not about to get you significantly better. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, but... Yeah, the players need to stop crying. Like all the technology and all this stuff, man. You want to talk about what you might call it? Tore everything in her leg. I'm talking wrestling wise, Charlotte Flair, bro. She is already working out. No brace. Technology crazy now, man. That's all these niggas, but that you know, basketball tough. <laughs> that's 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 a lot. And of wrestling is it? It, hey. These guys come back faster than ever before. Right? We, we can't we, we can't be slandering medicine now. Yeah, they got all this great medicine, but then somehow we can't play 82 games. While the only medicine we had literally in the mid-2000s was suck it up. And Kobe was out there with all these pads still playing. Hey, bro, they ain't playing with that type of pace, man. When, when you play no defense and every game is 120 to 130, 
That shit's a lot of running, bro. That's a lot of cardio. You need time to get your legs back after an injury. But then on the flip side, when you're playing them games, and them games are 85, 84, and you getting smacked across the whole body, taking physical pay, but you still making it. And they were playing. Kobe was playing four games of five nights, and that wasn't too long ago. I think it's easier to withstand the physical game with with basketball night in and night out than having to just do all this cardio and you know sustain like soft issue soft tissue injuries you know calves ankles that's what aau is the only thing good for you were playing sometimes you played four games in a day and that and by the end of the day trust me i rough this shit by the end of the day the reps are tired the players are tired we all want to go home but then you right back there the next day play it again those kids are fucking 15 and 16 year old they have the energy to do that shit Man, like... And then, and then that shit's part of the problem too. That shit, you only you specializing in basketball. You playing all those games young, mm-hmm. and then you go look, and then you go, you know, you're at college, then you straight to the NBA, eighty two games a, a season, with the pace of the NBA, with the way they play play in the league now. It's so free flowing. It's so much running. It's it's so many points. That shit adds so Luka, up after a while. Luca don't run. Luca's slow as hell, and he scored seventy three points. That's why a nigga don't be getting really hurt for real, even though he's sitting out tonight. <laughs> like, he is slow. <laughs> he is not yeah. athletic at all. Him and Jokic, man, they got that shit figured the fuck out. <laughs> Itch, big man. Jokic's giving my nigga AD buckets in the playoffs. He can't jump. <laughs> AD played probably the best basketball. I seen that nigga play in the Western Conference Finals last year. It didn't matter. <laughs> Didn't matter. Didn't matter for anything. Nothing. Didn't even. Couldn't even get a game. That's. It was. He was dropped. What did he have? Forty game two. One of those games. Yeah, I it was mean, one do, or two. Doing everything he can. Just so. And then Just Jokic so. hit that game winner on them. One of those games too. Yeah, like, that was pain. <sighs> that was pain. But all right, man. Thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. We'll be back to preview the Super Bowl next week live on the L7C YouTube. Uh, make sure you like, rate, comment, subscribe wherever you listen. Cannot wait to do that. L7C Podcast signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.